Hi, it's Matt, welcome to the shop. And today, um, I was looking through the comments from the, uh, what is it video? The uh, V-Twin video. A lot of the comments are kind of what I expected. It's not the end of the world. If you love them because they sound like shit, then that's up to you, you know what I mean? Personal opinion stuff. It's just a talking discussion. But it does annoy me when these yanks go fucking on and on on about the power. <sighs> and then people are sort of, some guy said us something about you get a $10,000, it was in Australia, $10,000 V8 and you try and get blah blah. We'll get to the V8 stuff, right? We'll get to the V8 stuff. So, uh, one thing I wanted to do is talk is talk about some of the comments i've got two comments here in particular and this is the title of the video or oh, it'll be something related i don't know what it is yet but it's um what is a good engine you know what i mean so when we look at alternate designs of engines i might say this is shite or whatever the reason why is because we have um we have the gold sample. You know, we have just say it's a just say it's a, a two-stroke, right? Let's just say it's a two-stroke engine, right? And then this is our golden sample. And then we have another engine. Why am I fucking over there? If I'm gonna stand over here, fucking just do that, you bell and fucking tit, right? So we have our two-stroke engine, and then Ryger, I think it's called Ryger, or is it right? Yeah, Ryger or something like that. They come up with this new idea, and I do a video about this, and I'll say, oh, it's shit, or it's not, or something like that, because we have this here, right? And the power figures, and how much it costs, and the complexity, and emissions, and blah, blah, blah. When someone develops a new type of two-stroke engine, or just say like the Hossack, right? The Hossack engine. You create this engine, it has to solve the issues that the engine that we already use has, right? But not bring newer ones that this one didn't have. You know what I mean? It has to be an improvement, right? Uh, otherwise, it gets labelled as a shit engine. But that's... Um, alternative engine designs so for example another one is just say a two litre car engine the standard two litre car engine and then you compare it to a Wankel engine uh, EL right you compare it to a Wankel engine you say oh well it does this is this better than this and then you go through the pros and cons of each, and then you go, do you know what? These things cost so much to repair. They're unpredictable. You know, they can just go bang. You can just flip a seal and it's fucked, right? And so on. And the fucking emissions, they leak oil like it's going out of fashion, so on and so on. So, you know, it's kind of like that. However, um, you know, so this bloke and... It, Neo Bro said horsepower per litre is one thing, uh, brake specific f uh, fuel capacity uh, is another thing. Not that Harley's are good at that. But you take a shot at modern American V8s, they get good BS, 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 bullshit factor competition. Um, while it doesn't matter for a bike, and then he goes on saying, what makes a good engine varies depending on the factors that you're looking at. And this is what this is, this title of this video is. No, it's not, right? It is very simple and as plain as day what makes a good engine. And I'm actually really surprised at myself that I haven't done this video yet. Well, no shit. So what makes a good engine? It's quite simple, really. We're after a few things. Number one, we're after usable power. Now this can be anything. This can be a generator. This can be fucking APU. This can be anything. 
All right, the other thing is we're after, it needs to use the least amount of fuel. That's it. And number three is because we're talking about a vehicle, so just we, basically we want to move, this engine has to move, right? Because it's basically, it's a, no, it's a moving engine. <laughs> um, weight is a consideration, right? So if we look at these three, it has to be the most amount of power we can get. So we'll just call it, you know, we'll just in brackets put HP kilowatts, right? It's usable power, the most we can get for the least amount of fuel, right? There is no point, a bad engine, right? A bad engine, a badly engineered engine, because a bad engine is one that doesn't work. I mean, from an engineering point of view, when we're comparing one engine to another. So like that Harley V8 compared to the Ducati, the CC is proportional to the amount of fuel that goes into it because they're all running a round stoichiometric. So we don't need all of the figures. You know, people are saying, what the torque figures, stuff like that. It's called dropping down and being in a lower gear. Oh, and low down torque, the Ducatis have got shit lots of that. And then when you talk, if they're talking about off the line, it's quite simple. <laughs> and then it comes into acceleration if you really want to get off the line. And the Ducati makes the fucking Harley look like a, well, a fat slag with eating loads of cake. The fact of the matter is, is that once, like I say, once we get into this vehicle, this moving side of things, then weight becomes a consideration. There is no point having an engine, oh, let's choose that, what's it called, the Wall Wallsters, it's got a weird name, uh, that massive ship engine with like half a million horsepower. It's got loads of usable power and it uses fuck all fuel for every horsepower that it makes, but its weight is incredible, you know what I mean? So this is what made uh, two strokes really good, is because they can make a lot of usable power. Fuel, mm, that was the bad thing, not just the emissions, just the fact that it is banging every other, every fucking basically every other stroke. And it was lightweight, so a two stroke, let's get another color, uh, red. So if we put a two stroke here, just as a, you know, as a thing, a two stroke had lightweight and had a lot of usable power. However, the fuel that it used, it wasn't fucking brilliant at that. The four stroke, the four stroke is, let's use a different color you tip. God, fucking this up. Uh, blue, let's go blue. Uh, so the four stroke, that has mm, the weight, it's making good power for the amount of fuel that it uses. And they brought the weight down, but so the two strokes, yada 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 yada, this kind of thing. You know what I mean? So out of these two, you can see that the two stroke has one thing, but it's this amount of fuel thing that's the big killer. And that's why it's related to emissions, because there's one way to cut emissions, that's to quit your ignition and don't fucking use the thing. So if you can use less fuel, half the fuel, you're going to half your emissions. Now, now it's getting a bit funny with the, what the emissions are exactly made out of, but you can get where I'm going with this as a simple, you know, um, roadmap, if you want to call it that. But what makes a good engine is one that makes good usable power for its weight and for the fuel it uses. That's why that S&S &S &S engine is just dog shit. They talk about power, but from what and at what weight, you know, Yes, then there's other considerations like cost and stuff, but generally, if you could make an engine that was twice the price, but produced double the power, you'd pay it. Or it was twice the price, but used half the fuel, then you'd pay it. Or it was twice the price, but you know, all, all being equal, it was twice the price, but half the weight. You think of all these three aspects. If you had a car, the engine was twice the price, but the emissions were half then manufacturers will be forced to pay the cost of those engines. And they do nowadays. That's like adding caps to it and stuff like particle filters and all this other shit and direct injection and all this other rubbish. Um, so yes, they do pay a lot more for their engines because of that, for, for the injectors. They now become standard things, but they do pay more than they would do 30 years ago for the same type, the same CC engine. If you said to MotoGP, we can make exactly the same power, but it's half the weight, but it's double the cost, they'd fucking pay it. 
if they said it's the same weight but double the horsepower they'd pay it you get what i mean so it's basically these are the three principles to go by this is the engineering side of things if i could design an engine and it used half the fuel to make the same power i'd be a billionaire if I could make an engine that used the same amount of fuel but doubled the power, I'd be a billionaire. And if I could make the engine that made the same amount of fuel, uh, same amount of power using the same amount of fuel but it was half the weight, I'd be a billionaire. It's these three things. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. I can't believe I haven't done this video until now. And oh yeah, sorry, we're gonna get into some one of the other ones. There's one other question on here. And uh, we'll add this at the end just for the fucking shits and gigs. Oh yeah, so he says, I got, uh, I get your point and I do agree that the V-Twins are outdated. But the whole horsepower to CC thing is a stupid argument. Well, CC is related to weight. The bigger your cylinders, the bigger everything else has to be to accommodate that. Uh, application is king. For instance, a John Deere is 6.8 lit litres, but yet only makes 175 horsepower. Uh, is that motor too small for the amount of power it produces? Well, no, but, and he does go on to say, I understand that one is a tractor and one is a motorcycle, but I could make the same argument about a sports bike versus a V-twin cruiser. Well, no, you can't, because the Harley-Davidson is a motorcycle. Two wheels, a seat, and the Ducati, two wheels and a seat, right? These are two things. If you look at the prices of them, the Harley's going to cost you more. And people might say, but it's got loads of load on torque. But what for? You're not pulling a fucking tractor. You know, you're not pulling a fucking trailer. It's useless. With the Decay, still got loads of torque anyway. But you just keep it up in the rev range and just always ride around in the, in the lower gear. If you, you know, you pull off in first, redline the shit out of it and then go into second. You do, it's going to kick the shit out of the Harley. There's, no, there's not even any contest. So people say the lower bottom end torque for a Harley. Don't be so fucking daft. Um... You know, the fact of the matter is that the Harley doesn't steer, it's sluggish, it's all over, it's just not a... These are two modes of transports that are predominantly single-seaters, the bikes, the motorbikes. We're not comparing tractors to cars here, we're comparing motorbike to motorbike. These are two street-legal motorbikes that are sold to the general public. And the other thing is, as well, is that 153 horsepower that that s, &S engine made, that's the special sexy one. What the fuck is the stock one doing now i know the stock one that wasn't that cc but fuck me you know what i mean uh loads of people compared other engines you know they're saying the the rc8 and stuff you could go on forever they were small batch runs to be quite honest um but you know the ducati have got loads of v twins like that they've been doing it for a long time and we're going to go more into this of why is that engine so bad why is that where is it all going where is it losing it any road, stick into this point. This is what a good engine, what makes a good engine, what makes a bad engine, if you get what I mean. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.